Hello everyone and welcome back to another Figurehead Reviews video and today we are taking a look at the Marvel Legends Crossbones from the Crimson Dynamo Build-A-Figure Wave. Here we have Crossbones displayed in the front window with his accessories and his Build-A-Figure piece and then down at the bottom we see Marvel's Crossbones with the red across there. On the side we do have some artwork of Crossbones with his eyes just kind of disappeared there. And then that is going to be the same artwork on both sides. On the back, we see that artwork expanded upon, and we can see that he's holding a gun there behind his neck. Pretty cool looking pose. And we do have a quick read up. Crossbones makes it his mission to take out Captain America, no matter the loss of life at stake. Then we do have all the other figures needed in this wave to complete the Crimson Dynamo build a figure. At the bottom, we have the UPC code, so you can check with your local retailer to see if they have this in stock. But enough about that. Let's get this open and take a look at crossbones and here is crossbones outside of the packaging and really excited to get a comic book version of crossbones in the collection i don't have one so that is really cool on the downside though this is using a pretty outdated body mold much like the bucky cap mold has run its course for our sort of regular body the hyperion body used here for the larger characters has kind of run its course as well you may notice some weird looking proportions and what i like to call the lie field chest where the chest seems like it's sticking way too far out from the body and then you'll probably notice a very long neck as well or at least a neck that looks longer than it should be so this isn't the best body to put it on especially when we have new body sculpts like the omega red body that gives us butterfly joints and just a little bit better uh, sculpt work so that is a bit of a disappointment that not only did we have a bucky cap in this wave but we also followed it up with a hyperion body so both of those body sculpts are several years old at this point and Crossbones does come with some accessories, the first being these double barrel pistols. They're going to be cast in this dark gray. They do fit into his hands just fine, and the sculpt and detail on them look pretty cool. And then he is going to get these two sci-fi looking weapons that are cast in a lighter shade plastic, more like a ivory. And these are actually the exact same pistol that we saw with Spymaster. So again, we get reused parts even within the same wave. That's kind of disappointing. Now, these blasters are going to fit in the holsters that he does have on the side. The double barrel pistols will not fit in there. And when standing straight up, Crossbones is coming in at 7 inches tall, which makes him about 17.8 centimeters. So he is certainly coming in on the taller side. I mean, he is a big character, so I don't know if he's quite that big, though. I guess I haven't looked to see if he's supposed to be that much of a tower over some of the other Avengers. Um, but either way, since he doesn't come with any other accessories other than his Build-A-Figure piece, let's go ahead and just jump in and take a look at the sculpt and paintwork here on Crossbones. And getting up close here, we can see a pretty decent looking sculpt. Now this is more about the paintwork though on this one. And you can see little cracks there around the nose. And it does get a little bit rough right there around the edges. And I mean, I said it's more about the paint, but the sculpt there of the lines and the furrowed brow look really good and well done. Now looking at it though, take a look at the black spots here and here. It almost looks like maybe this is a little crooked. And when we go to the top, I mean, I'm pretty sure I have the head looking straight on, and it looks like this is veering off to the side. So it looks like maybe a little off-center, I'm thinking. So it's not totally noticeable unless you're kind of looking for it, uh, which of course I was. But yeah, I feel like I got a little bit off-center there on the, uh, the skull there. And then looking at the back, though, we do get the little straps here, and that is going to be flexible. Looks like it's a piece that's glued into the back of the head. But all in all, not bad there. Looking down here at the tank top, that is going to be a painted flesh tone, and unfortunately, it's very ugly. I mean, you got some, uh, not the flashing, but just the injection spot there. You got the crease or the, I don't know, the piece of plastic where they come together. I don't know why I can't think of what the heck to call it. That is really ugly looking. The flesh tone is painted okay around the neck, but eh. and then we've got a little dab of flesh tone there on the back. Looking at the design on the front, though, the crossbones, not too bad. Again, just a little, like, pockets here and a little, is that, like, flesh tone paint on it? Looks like it. So, I mean, not bad. Only really when you get up close can you see that. And then just, I guess, I don't know, the chest, like I said, just feels like it sticks out way too far. 
I don't know. I just don't like this body shape. And then I did have kind of a funky thing going on here at the shoulder with the molded plastic. We could see a little crack there and then some discoloration. But all in all, I mean, the the sculpt isn't bad in the sense of like how it looks. Like they look like muscles, a little over exaggerated, but they look like muscles and such. So he's got pouches going around here on the wrist. He does have the trigger finger there, and then the sleeveless gloves look like they're okay. No real bad issues there with the paint. Belt, we're going to have this buckle painted with a gold, but no other paint it looks like. Just a lot of pouches. And the holsters came out okay. We did get some gold paint there on the, uh, the straps, so I like that. That is cool. And... The boots are quite shiny. I actually like that. You know, it's like a high-polished military boot. So that came out looking pretty cool. I do like that. And you get a little texture underneath there. So, I mean, it, it's, like I said, I don't like the Hyperion body, but the design of the character is pretty pretty basic. And, you know, it matches pretty good from what I recall seeing. Now, looking at the articulation, so the head does go around quite a ways. And you get actually a little bit of movement there, like side to side. He's going to be able to look very far down and very far up, too. Yeah, quite a ways up. He's got arms that can come up, um, let's see, a little more than 90. I don't know if I'm scraping. Let's find out. So we went up high there. Did I scrape into it? Nope, not bad. And then, of course, you do get full rotation there on the arm. You do have a bicep swivel, double-jointed elbow, and then both hands are going to have rotation, and it is going to have that ulnar and radial hinge on it, uh, which I love for the gun-holding hands. We've been seeing that a lot in this wave, so I really like that. Ab crunch goes pretty deep, very far backwards, but... The sculpt work is going to stop there, so it looks kind of weird if you're going that far back. He's going to have waist rotation, but it takes the belt with him unless you want to push the belt down a bit. There we go. If you do bring the legs apart, it is going to push that up because that is all connected pieces. So it does push the belt up if you bring the legs up too far. Thankfully, that doesn't hinder going forward with the kick or backwards. You do have an upper thigh cut, which can pull it, but not too bad. Double jointed knees. And you do have a boot cut and then a hinge and ankle pivot. And that is going to do it for this review, everyone. So overall, I think aside from being on the Hyperion body, the figure is actually decently executed. The paint and the design looks good from what I remember the comic version of Crossbones looking like. I mean, it is a relatively basic design. I mean, black tank top you know, skull, uh, skull mask and crossbones on the chest. So, uh, there are of course the little errors that I talked about with maybe the evenness there of the skull. And really, I think the biggest complaint for this guy is this Hyperion body. I mean, we get really big, like gap there in the legs. I don't know. Just like I said, the proportions aren't great. So that is the biggest downside here. Now, if you don't have a crossbones figure in your collection, like me, I I wanted this figure anyway because I want to have crossbones in there. Having some more Captain America villains or just Avengers villains in general is really nice. And the downside is you got to realize that they made a crossbones figure, so the chances of them reissuing a crossbones figure anytime soon is probably pretty slim. So, uh, you know, unless you want to find an older crossbones figure, this is probably your only chance to get one for some years here. So that's kind of my take on it. Uh, if you don't really care about the character, then, you know, it's an easy pass. But being a comic, comic figure, uh, I think it is still worth the pickup just considering the fact that there's not a whole lot of crossbone alternatives out there. Now, with that being said, though, that is it for this review. Let me know what you think. Is this a figure that you want to get? Is it a figure that you're going to pass on because it just the design is just too much of a turnoff? Let me know in the comments down below. If you like this video, make sure to hit that thumbs up. Subscribe for more content just like this. And as always, thanks for watching my video, and have a great day.